Hello and welcome back to the Not Your Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Here to look back on what has just been going at Hamden Park in the League Cup semi-final between St Johnston and Hibs in a pretty special League Cup semi-final between the pair. So we hope you do enjoy. Do remember to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Yes, I think um, contrast of emotions would be fair to say um, from that one. Just to give you a sort of quick thoughts on the video and you'll see all the rest of the reaction on our website and um, our social media um, over the rest of this weekend heading into the other parts of next week before the Premiership kicks off. Um, where to start with this one? 3-0 versus uh, Hibs for St Johnston. A convincing victory in the end, although it didn't really start like that. Hibs had all the early possession, all the early chances, particularly from Jamie Murphy. His chances will probably be seen as the ones of what if for Hibs, even though they did have a few others. Paul Hanlon went close, Jackson Irvine as well. Jamie Murphy's were the big one. He got free space when six yards was under Clark's goal. Could have put it anywhere on the goal apart from straight at the St. Johnson keeper. He hits it off him and then his rebound chip from about three yards out or perhaps four is chipped over Xander Clark, but it hit the bar and St. Johnson were able to clear just as it looked like the pressure was getting too much for them. So a huge missed opportunity for Hibs there before 35 minutes in, Jason Kerr, Corner into the box, he rose highest. Ryan Port is getting caught underneath um, a ball in and then headed home by the Saints captain. So 1 0 it was at half time, perhaps against the run of play, but in these big matches, Hibs know that more than many teams. I think this is their eighth semi final in seven seasons, the sixth one that they have lost, that you really need to be taking your chances when it matters in these games. They didn't do that, and then in the second half, they didn't really respond well enough to that first St. Johnson goal. Sean Rooney, who got man of the match in the end, got in on St. Johnson's second. Free kick into the box, and then he headed home. A really good header, and perhaps a bit of debate between him and Jason Kerr as to who scored the better header. But great header from him, nonetheless. That puts St. Johnson in control, and from then, they only really looked like one winner, even if St. Johnson weren't going to add to the lead, because Hibs just didn't look like scoring after that. However, it was signed, sealed, delivered, 63 minutes in. Sean Rooney again turning into Cafu on the right hand side, a brilliant ball across the face of goal. Craig Conway just about scrambling it in. Hibbs tried to clear it over off the line, but well over the line, as um, it was proved. And then goal line technology was in use um, in these games, but I don't think um, it was needed to decide that one, although probably the closest um, we've came so far to having used it across the, the games that's been in use at Hamden. Yeah, so that was it. St. Johnson sailing a 3 0 victory. Callum Davidson, of course, delighted with his side's result, and then I'll drag Ross post-match saying that well, I was happy with the first part of St. John's, uh, Hibs's performance, the second half display against St. Johnson just simply wasn't good enough, and it wasn't frustration, it was anger for Hibs's boss, so but uh insight for sort of both teams, at least my thoughts anyway, uh, massive result for St. Johnson, not, they didn't look like a bottom six team in that one, a good day for them in the Premiership as well, Ross County and Mullow were both beaten, albeit Ross County and Mullow probably didn't expect or weren't favourites at least to get results against Rangers and Aberdeen. But they have both lost and they lost 2-0 and Ross County lost 5-0, so I really damage them on the, the goal difference for the styles. So St. Johnson, a good day in the Premiership as well for them, just simply based on their rivals. And then they went and did the business at Hamden. They had to ride a storm at first, and if Hibs had went in and take their chances and they were leading maybe a goal or so up at half time probably couldn't have been any complaints, but that doesn't matter. Hib, uh, St. Johnson deservedly ahead because they took their chances when they mattered. And in the second half, there was only really one team in it. Hibs so slow out of the blocks, didn't really look like they believed that they could then get the result after going one behind. And St. Johnson took full advantage of that and a great result for Callum Davidson's side who reached their third ever National Cup final. And they'll meet Livingston or St. Mirren in the next round, the final, and who could have predicted that back in August that we'd have potentially St. Johnson v. Livingston or St. Johnson v. St. Mirren in the League Cup final. Credit to the sort of the three teams now still involved because to get this far and for the likes of your traditional top six, if you will, Celtic, Rangers, Aberdeen, Hearts, Hibs, Dundee United, for those six to sort of drop out and for St. Johnson to be to be in the final is some going. St. Johnson had a really tough League Cup group stage as well. They also had the All-Premiership 
a fair in that one and they've came through it just fine on the other side. So well done to Cam Davidson's men. I'm sure they'll be looking forward as a club to the final at the end of February. Still a lot of Premiership action to go then and it gets a bit crazy on the calendar between now and the end of February just with the amount of midweek games that we've got to go pretty much I think um, into the start of February and into the middle of February at least there's Premiership action at least once every two days, every three days. Um, so yeah, it's a very busy period coming up, but obviously with that in the future to look forward to, I'm sure there won't be any lack of motivation. The big thing for them and cut on top of improving their league position, perhaps pushing towards those top six um, spots, but perhaps more pressingly the man, uh, minute of time is dragging themselves away from that sort of 11th to 12th place spot. There'll be a lot of incentive to play for places in next month's final, and they'll be keeping a close eye on um, Livingston versus St Mirren on Sunday, which we will also have a video like this shortly after the full time whistle. So do check that out. Perhaps, yeah, it's another pretty bitter blow for them. They've got to this stage so many times recently. And well, Ryan Portis, Jack Ross both mentioning um, pre match in their press conferences that it is a testament to how well Hibs have done in the Cups to get this far. Very true. They have done extremely well to get to these sort of stages consistently, but they were the favourites heading into this one. They were the team expected to go and lift the trophy based on the size of club, based on league position, and they've fallen short again. And I think this one, even though they lost to Hearts, their city rivals, championship opposition in the Scottish Cup semi-final in October, this one's perhaps the bitterest of blows because it wasn't like in that one where you can say on another day they maybe got it and yeah, St Johnston, as soon as they scored, Hibs didn't look like um, coming back from it at all, which is going to be the most disappointing thing uh, for Jack Ross and then his post-match stuff. Very clearly not happy at all with how things panned out. 3-0 is, um, is a bit of a convincing scoreline, so it's not like they've lost by the odd goal here or there. They've lost pretty convincingly, and St Johnston maybe could have had another goal or two at the end, so a pretty horrible day for Hibs, I think it, it's fair to say. And one positive for them, one massive positive for them was the reintroduction of Scott Allen. He was sort of on the bench and ready after so long out. It was great to see him back in the fold, um, even if the result didn't go his way. Obviously, he's had a really hard time with um, fitness issues and injuries and things like that and made his return after a lengthy spell on the sideline. So great to see him back, albeit I'm sure that both he and Hibs will have wished it was under better circumstances, but he is the sort of player they need that sort of link between attack uh, midfield and attack just now perhaps a bit of spark but he will take time I don't think it would be very fair of at least fans to think that Scott Allen's just going to come back for, for all that time in the sideline he's going to be popping hat-tricks and hat-tricks of assists here and there he is going to take a bit of time I'm sure to even get back into starting contention it was about 25 minutes or so for him and this one you'd like to think that'll gradually build up to maybe 35 minutes in one game and then a half, so on and so forth. So that's pretty much the only positive Hibs can take from this on an otherwise really disappointing cup out for them. And, but that's all we've got time for on this wee analysis video of the League Cup semi-final. Hope you do enjoy. Congra uh, congratulations to St Johnston, commiserations to Hibs, and it sets up for a really interesting tie between Livingston and St Mirren, who now know who they need to face in the League Cup final. And while they would have been well aware, St Johnson would be a really stern task, especially St Mirren. St Mirren haven't had um, the best of luck against St Johnson in recent times. Um, Hibs were obviously the favourites. So for more favourites to be out, and I mean, it's been a League Cup full of shots. You've had St Mirren beat Rangers, St Mirren beat Aberdeen, Ross County putting out Celtic. Livingston managing to get to this stage, St Johnson getting to this stage. Now St Johnson are in the final after beating Hibs in a game they probably weren't expected to, to win. Um, credit uh, to all involved in, in this League Cup. It's been a really exciting one and definitely one that we'll probably not see very often. I think seeing finals like we're about to see in the sort of League Cup and the Scottish Cup will become more rare as the years go on. Celtic and Rangers so dominant in Scottish football and uh, Dundee United working their way back up. Hearts will come back to a bigger force in the Premiership soon as well. So yeah, should save our these Cup finals then for provincial clubs um, while we're here. But we hope you have enjoyed this video. Do remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, check back in here 
um, tomorrow afternoon when we have similar type video when St Mirren play Livingston. We see who comes out on top in that one. If you want your build up to that, we've got interviews with 2013 St Mirren League Cup winner Mark McCausland and 2003 League Cup winner from that era and Derek Lilly from a Livingston perspective. So do check them out for your post uh, pre match viewing. Right, I've said my bit. Subscribe to the channel and until next time, take it easy.